Greetings, everyone. I am Lotus Prince, and for this Let's Play, we are going to tackle Never Alone. This game may very well be unique regarding its creative process. See, it's an adaptation of a sort of fairy tale, or a folk tale for little children from the Inuit people of Alaska. And what makes this unique is not so much that it's an adaptation of a tale. We've seen that before. There is a whole set of games that do the Grimm's Tales, there's I Have No Mouth and I Know Scream, there's... <laughs> right? American McGee's Alice. But what's interesting about this game, Never Alone, is that something like 40 people, including tribal elders and storytellers, actually got together with the game developers to help ensure this game's authenticity. So this shows a couple of things. First, that people this old school are on board with creating something like this, like as a video game, but number two, this actually happening. You know, again, American McGee's Alice exists, but American McGee didn't talk to Lewis Carroll and, ha and have a collaborative effort producing the game, right? I mean, Harlan Ellison did help produce I Have No Mouth and I Must Scream a lot, but that's not really a fairy tale meant for little kids all over the world. You know, this is for, it's for a particularly niche crowd. Now, with Never Alone, it happens to apply to a niche audience because not everyone lives in that region of the world, but the stories could be told to everyone and everyone could get it. So what's interesting about this is that the original storyteller of this particular story was born in the late 1800s and lived as a young boy in the early 1900s, so he has since passed on. But he was big about conveying these stories. He had, I think, all the stories he knew uh, put on record, I think recorded on tape. So he made permanent the stories that he knew. And his daughter, however, is still alive, and I think she was one of the people that was helping produce this game. So this is about as close to the source as you can get. Now, what the story is, it's about a little boy who hunted caribou for food, and that's pretty much it. You know, he lived with his mother, everything's cool, but all of a sudden, blizzard after blizzard after blizzard after blizzard hit these people's house, and it's just, what's going on, you know? I'm used to snowy conditions, but I can't go out and hunt in the worst blizzards ever when they don't stop. This is going to be a real problem regarding being able to hunt food and eat to live. So eventually, he sets out to find what possibly could cause these blizzards, maybe get to the source? He does, and he tries to deal with it, and I won't tell you exactly what happens, but I will provide a link to the the Never Alone site, because it actually does include the original story on there, if you're curious. It's about two pages long, and if it were to be read out loud, it might take five minutes, certainly under ten. So you can see how it goes from there if you'd like. Now, a couple of interesting things here. First, from what I hear, the game is about four to six hours, because it's a video game. It's more of an interactive experience than a straight storytelling so you get to see things uh, in a different perspective. Another is uh, the boy was changed to a girl for a couple of reasons. One, they, uh, they wanted to have a strong female role for young girls who might be interested in this story, and I'm totally on board with that. God knows boys have enough male roles and games and stories and freaking everything, right? No harm done. Now, you might have noticed, based on what I was saying about the original short story, it's a very simple story, and it doesn't really demand that the main character be a particularly, like, a boy or a girl. You could switch the genders, or, or the sexes, I should say, and you would never know. If I said that the original story started a girl, you might have believed me. You know, there's no difference. The kid goes out and hunts for a living, and then there's a blizzard, stop the blizzard. Anyone could have done that, right? So the change does not compromise the integrity of the story or anything like that. Also, on top of all that, as I said, the original storyteller's daughter is still alive, and she was on board with the change. So that's really cool. That's like if I wanted to tell you the story of the little match girl, except I wanted to change it to the little match boy, and then Hans Christian Andersen's daughter comes up to me and says, yep, I'm cool with that. Like, that's awesome. That's Again, that's about as close to the source as you can get. 
So all these people are on board with making this game. And one thing I didn't mention is that this is kind of an evolution in storytelling. You have the old school oral traditions, you have recording on tape, you have the transferring to books. Well, now we have video games. Video games are kind of becoming the next big medium. So what's interesting about this is not only is it a different way of conveying the story, but also anybody in the world can play this immediately. It's available on Steam, and I, I, I think it was also transferred to the Xbox One and the PS4, and I believe Never Alone Sight is going to have a non-Steam PC version. Um, it says soon, coming soon. So there's that. Anybody can play this game. You know, I'm from New Jersey. It's not exactly like the greatest departure from Alaska. At least they're both part of the United States. But still, distance-wise, it's huge. And people in other countries can play it, too. Speaking of other countries, the game is available in multiple languages. But, from what I've gathered, multiple languages means multiple subtitles. There are going to be parts with narration, and they are going to be narrated in the original language of these people in Alaska, the Inuits. So it conveys a more authentic experience if you hear the story being told by the storyteller. Can you understand it? Maybe, maybe not, but at least you'll be able to read the subtitles to go along. But the nature of the storytelling itself will still go in your head and provide a very immersive experience. I am hyped about this. So what's going to happen is we are going to see the story of this girl and her little arctic wolf friend and they are going to try to get to the source of whatever blizzard is plaguing their town and see if they can put an end to this violent winter once and for all. I'm hyped. I hope you are too. Let's go crazy. <laughs> Kisima Inichuna. Hopefully I didn't butcher that pronunciation. As to what it means... There we are. Let's take a look at this gorgeous, gorgeous game. We have the play option, of course. Then there are cultural insights. Now, I'm not going to go into these... I'm not sure if I'm going to tackle these during the Let's Play at all, to be honest, but I'm certainly not going to go into them now, because I've taken a look at one of them, and it's this full-on documentary-style video, and there are lots of them. Right? 24 total? But as you can see, you can see where this is going. A living people, a living culture, it'd be really nice to hear a story, then you have... Scrimshaw, Arctic Fox, Caribou and Clothing, you go to various aspects of the culture. It's really awesome. But that is for some other time. And if I and th there's no way I'm covering them all, so if you want to take a look at all of them, get this game. Look at them yourself. You will not be sorry. Then we have options. Yeah, I can't con uh, blah, blah, blah. I can't change the controls, so I'm stuck with what's sad. Now everything is uh, bound really well to the left hand. Q is right next to the W. E is right next to the W. We have tab. Everything's within reach, but it requires a right-handed mouse, which I'm not quite used to. But that's okay. This part's really easy to control the left hand. If I can play Binding of Isaac, I can play this. I'm going to be using my right hand for one thing, and that's the bola. Otherwise... I think we're good. Oh yeah, I want to show you this. Languages, check this out. 
English, Spanish, Spanish, Latin American, French, German, Italian, Japanese, Portuguese, parentheses, Brazil, like Brazilian style, not Portugal style, I guess, Russian, Korean, like, that's awesome. Alright, let us begin. The Inupiat are an Alaska native people who have thrived for thousands of years in one of the most formidable environments on Earth. Oh yes, and you can see it says two new insights. So those were those cultural insights that we started the game with. Well, let's begin the game. Oh, that's the bola. You know, the art reminds me a bit of those ancient Greek vases with like the totally black figures on the yellow background. Also they got a caribou and this one has a seal. Oh no, it's the same girl. Oh, looks like we have a new cultural insight. Scrimshaw. Well, let us, let us continue. Anuholik pai sili, sunira ganai chokunni. Tabla ni beak siagari waluk, ayungi chok. Pai jagni ulik sok. Is this how the game starts? Uh, yeah, I'm gonna run. Forget this. Good thing the bears just kind of being lackadaisical about things. I was wondering if this game would have enemies. I guess it does. I suppose if I have a bola, then I'll have to be killing something. Oh, jeez. I screwed that one up. The game was kind. Hey, there's the fox in the background. Unlike the original story, I'm gonna have a little helper. Ooh, I'm not outrunning this. Oh, damn. Yeah, it's actually possible to play this game in co-op mode, but because I'm not doing that, I can switch back and forth between the characters at will, so I guess co-op can be more efficient because both people can do the th things at once. But, let's switch it up. So what do I do with this guy? <laughs> oh, I bet I know what I have to do with him. Yep. <laughs> See you, pal. Oh, I'm gonna... Alright. Oh, this is awesome. And I guess this little buddy gets to follow me around. The weather did not clear up as a blizzard. She was followed by yet another blizzard. Yeah, you may have noticed the beginning of the game 
said that this is the story of Nasruk. I did not address this in the opening dialogue of the LP, the, the vlog section, but a tradition among the Inuit storytellers is that when someone comes up with a story, it's effectively that person's story. So anyone else who tells the story would say something like, this is Nasruk's story, or I learned this, or I, I heard this story from Nasruk, which you will notice is how this game began. Let us continue. Oh, I can just... Hmm. Alright. Oh, I was curious about that. Okay. But that is adorable. I wonder if I should watch that. Because it told me... To, I'll, I'll try one. If this goes on for a while, then I'll have to stop repeating this. Oh, that's cute. When I was growing up, uh, my grandpa uh, had a pet white fox. If you're a good friend with a fox, when there's danger abound, they try to keep you from getting into trouble. They pull tricks here and there, and foxes are uh, like uh, spoiled little kids in that way. When you let her out, she'd go prancing out in the snow, jumping in the air. I know she was happy then. Come running at me and jump on my chest, knock me backwards, lick my face, and, and I try not to let her. So that was my memory of my grandpa's pet fox. That's awesome. All right, I'm gonna enjoy watching these. And I like how it actually shows the in-game scene to show like, they're making everything they can relevant. That's really cool. Oh, okay, so I can't do it with her. Therefore, oh, I keep, I keep doing it. Yeah, I keep pressing, okay. Now how do I, oh. Oh, that's cool. Alright. This game's gonna get complicated, I bet. Oh, I'm enjoying this. Yeah, we're gonna have to put up with this a lot, I think. Remember, and jeez. Endless Blizzard. You know, I wonder... Uh, well, hold on. Uh. Ow. I wonder... No, I don't have Bola, the, the Bola yet. Oh. Uh. That is useful. Oh, you know I'm going to be needing this a lot. Caribou and clothing. You know what? Sure. I'm gonna do it. Caribou was... It, it provided for us in many ways. Our clothing in those days was made of all caribou skin. I grew up wearing caribou pants, mittens, caribou skin mattress, blankets. Some people had boots that were made with wolf leggings, sealskin sole bottoms. Baleen was shaved to make insoles. They kept us quite dry and warm as well. But the caribou skin clothing was the best. We would get as many yearlings as we could for our outer clothing. And for a heavy winter, we would get caribou in February or March because the hair was the longest and the skin was the thickest, and we would use those for our winter gear. With that stuff on, you could sleep outside in 50 below, 
and they wouldn't bother you a bit. God damn. Seriously? Wow. Also, the very concept of that temperature terrifies me. Wow, that is crazy. Oh, wow. Oh, that's too cool. That's... well... Guess I'm dead. Oh, I feel bad, too. The fox is whining. Let's try it again. Okay, I don't know if I'm gonna watch too many more of those, uh, cultural insights, because those are gonna take away from the gameplay a lot, but they're super cool. Okay, I can clearly jump on this. I guess I'm supposed to wait. Right. Oh, okay, I have to be the fox. That makes sense. Oh, super cool. Does she follow me? Yeah. All oh, these things are awesome. I wonder what the, uh, the significance, like, the relevance of their look is. <laughs> Sila has a soul. Hmm. That might be it. But anyway, I'm gonna I'm gonna keep going now. I don't know, should I what was it the pig Okay, I ha I have to watch this one because I gotta see the relevance, I'm sorry. But this is super cool. Silla is the weather. Oh. It also means the atmosphere. Here's the Nuna or the land. And it's anything from the land into the moon, the sun, the stars. That's Sila. It's a, it's a very spiritual, and we have a relationship with Sila. Uh, Sila has a soul in the same way we do as people, in the same way animals do. I think spirit helpers in and of themselves are really about how we're connected with things. And so it may be that there is a spirit helper that shows themselves as a bird to show you the way home. Or it may be a spirit helper that actually decides to show themselves with the face and body of a man instead of their animal form. And so I think one of the things that's hard to understand is that it's not one way of seeing things. It's one way of knowing you're connected to everything. We've always had that spirituality of everything around us. It's the interaction you have with the air you breathe, the, the ocean that you gather resources from, the rivers from which you gather fish, the tundra from which you pick berries, the animals that give themselves. It's, it's all of all of that. I'm definitely glad I watched that one, because there's something interesting I need to point out. The original story, um, I don't quite remember the boy's name. It was something like four or five syllables, but this girl's name is Nuna, and if you caught what they were saying in the documentary... Oh, sweet. Uh, Nuna means land, and they were saying that the land... People, like, of Earth have a connection with everything around them, and here we have Nuna having this connection with this spirit fox, which is freaking awesome. So this game is being literal and metaphorical. Oh, okay. That's cool, we got a little wall jumping action here. I have to actually, I have to actually switch to her, all right. Now where do I, where do I go from here? Oh, or was it just Okay. Oh, screwed that one up. 
I love how the fox knows how to <laughs> hold down and I don't. There it is. Also, you like I, I really like how both of these people can jump onto a ledge at the same time. You'll notice one of us is in the foreground and one of us is, oh whoa. Oh, you really have to hold on to the ground. But you'll notice that um, one of us is in the foreground and one of us is in the background, so we can actually grab ledges simultaneously. You don't have to wait for one person to do one thing and have the other person do the other thing. That would really bog down two-player gameplay. Oh, cool. This almost reminds me of uh, Pocahontas for the Genesis. Oh, and she just straight up has handholds, right? No? Okay. Oh, but we have this. Now nah, I gotta do it with an actual ledge, or edge. I like this particularly big one looking down at us. It's like overseeing the whole platforming part right there. Ooh, that was close. Especially because I landed on ice. Can't believe I didn't slip. So that's how it's gonna be. Tricky, tricky. I better hurry then. Or I could just make a terrible jump. There it is. Oh, that's not cool. Oh, barely made it out. That was close. Yeah, now that I got the platforming done, the game is just giving me a break. Oh, I am loving this. So I guess when the girl gets her bola, she'll be able to attack. I don't know if the fox is going to be so hot with that. Meanwhile, the fox can go places. That should not be... Oh, we are go we are going a different direction this time. Jeez. Well then. This is almost the opposite of what happened in the original story. It is said that with each gust of wind, the powdery snow blew in every direction. Huh, this this could be bad. Is that a whale skeleton? Huh. Nice foreground action there. I can't believe I'm seeing fires in this. There, there is nothing of the sort in the... Wow. Virtual story. 
that's what that is. Oh, that's cool. You can see the wing for a second. Did you see that? In the yeah. Oh, we gotta get on this problem. Huh. Oh, this is a useful wind. Okay, here it comes. Yeah. I think I actually run a little faster when I have a tailwind too. And I also like how the girl's actually looking at the foreground when she sees the little strange man. Oh. Fox time. I did not think I would make that jump. <laughs> Oh, this is this is way too cool. I going to gain. Ah, cool flute. Is that a walrus tusk? Alright, so it looks like we have a little mini quest for ourselves. I am absolutely going to get on this the first opportunity, but for now, I will stop the installment. Well, we certainly made a lot of progress today, didn't we? We started the game, we found some cultural insights, literally and figuratively, and while we did not manage to find what was causing the blizzard, we did make it back to our village, which has been destroyed. I have read the original story, and I have to say, I no longer know where we're going with this. There's a lot of intrigue to be had here. Someone wrecked the village and is looking for something, what, we do not know. However, we have spirits trying to help us along the way, plus this arctic fox, which is apparently a little more in tune with the spiritual realm than we ourselves are. And we've met this mysterious owl man who was willing to help us for a small price if we could find an item that he has lost. I am very, very excited to see where we're going with this. Until next time, everyone.